Yeah, okay, I, I get the gist of it. Um, I'm familiar with the quote. Here, here's here's what, what we don't know. There is no, that, 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 that is a rendition, that is a hearsay rendition of a conversation that the individual that wrote that didn't personally hear. It, it doesn't exist. And neither one of those people, Enver or the other guy, wrote this down. So it's different from the Holocaust. But what do I mean by authentic evidence? What, what I mean is there's something in writing some, some record of somebody saying something, either the minutes of a conference, uh, a conversation that's, that's, that's recorded at, at the time, um, so records. I, 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 I get back to what I said in the lecture several times. I'm not justifying anybody's actions. I'm not rationalizing. I'm explaining why they made the decision. What, what we don't have in this particular case, or any case, is, is, is something like the Nuremberg documentary record of, 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 of facts that are, that, that are in print or, or written down or something. There, there does not exist in this case. That may well be true. May well be true. I don't know. Um, it could be true. What, what, I, what, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, there, there's no authentic document that a historian can look at, that we all can look at, and say, yeah, he said it. I hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. The, 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 the British, in 1919, um, apprehend uh, and take and imprison on the island of Malta 120 Ottoman officials. Um, what for? They're interested in two things. One, crimes against the Armenians. Two, crimes against British prisoners captured at Al Kut in April 1915. So those are the, are, are the two things that they're looking for. They take the prisoners to Malta. They control Constantinople, the capital. They have the entire Ottoman government's records. They control all of, most of the important provincial centers. They control Adana, they control Baghdad, they control Jerusalem. So they, they have access, here's what they have access to. All the stuff at the top, they have access to all the stuff at the bottom. They find nothing. They, they look for three years they contact the American, uh, the, not Morgenthau, but his successor, they're in the American archival records at uh, College Park, reveal British pleading with the United States, can you help us find documentary evidence of these war crimes that link these war crimes to these people? They look for three years. They come up with nothing. They come up with nothing. Um, the, the response, is often the, Arme the, the, the Ottomans destroyed everything. You would have to believe that at the end of the war, somehow there was a conspiracy to scrub every single bit of information, not just from the Ministry of the Interior, but the Ministry of War, the Teshkalanta Masusa, the Ministry of the Navy, and all the provincial centers that would have received these documents. So how hard would it be in the Ottoman Empire in 1918 for a kind of an impromptu ad hoc conspiracy to do this. You know, you can, you can, you can, we can speculate, we don't know, but it's improbable. We do know that after three years, the British let these guys go and send them home. They may have been guilty, I don't know. Maybe some were. 
What we know for a fact is the British can't find evidence. And they ask the French, the Americans, they ask a lot of Armenian translators who have been what they call dragomen in, in the embassies in Constantinople. They, they, they do the obvious. They talk to all the Armenian survivors in Constantinople, and they say, help us find something. It's documented. Not, nothing turns up. Um, I can't explain it. You can't prove the negative. I, I surely can't explain it. That's a great question. Another question. Um, you mentioned that the uh, Ivan Archives have been open since 1999. So I'm trying to understand why is it so difficult regarding the numbers that you, you, know, you posted. Why is it so difficult to come up with those numbers in terms of you know Armenian, Ottoman, Ottoman Armenian citizens versus you know Muslims and like everything um, lived and how many were relocated during that time period? Uh, because Ottomans were well known for keeping excellent records. Um, I mean, is, is it a dispute situation where all, the, all that information is available right now, but other sources are saying, no, those are not true? It, it's a great question. Let me see a show of hands from everybody in here who reads Ottoman Turkish. <laughs> <laughs> one, one person, if we're lucky. I mean, that's, I don't, I've got to read modern Turkish. Uh, I, I wish I could. Here, here's the problem. Ataturk, as you know, discards the Ottoman alphabet in the 1920s and moves to a Western alphabet. Ataturk singularly and unilaterally cuts the modern Turkish Republic off from its history. You can go back and you can read the Declaration of Independence. You can read the Constitution. You can go farther back and read the English Bill of Rights from, from 1687. You can go back to, to, to 1215. You can read the Magna Carta. It's hard. It's archaic English, but you can read it. Turks can't read their own history. They can't read anything farther back than about 1930. So here's the problem in the archives. You can get at them. You can't find anybody who can read them. Um, what's the effect on, on, on the history? Archives are cataloged. They don't just have a pile of documents on the paper, on the table, and say, OK, work your way through them. Um, every document's cataloged. You go to the British Archives in Kew, or the American Archives in College Park, and there's a little called catalog that lists the documents. They haven't even begun to catalog the documents. There are 1.5 million documents in the military archives alone. Not the foreign ministry's archives, not the Bashba Khanlik prime minister's archives, the military archives alone. They've only cataloged like less than 5%. So, so, so the sad truth is they don't know what they've got. They don't know what they've got. Uh, that's, that's a slow process and it's going to take a long time to work through. Yes, sir. about what happens to the Armenians. What they're concerned about is winning the war. 
They're concerned about the possibility of losing the war. I'm not justifying that thinking. That's how they thought. But it's crystal clear. You read, the German archives are, are in print now. Wilhelm Gust published uh, most of them that are relevant to this. Those archives are, are, are full of rich detail about all the crimes against the Armenians. They're also full of reports of the incidents. Um, what happens after the Armenian rebellion stops, after the, the relocations stop in 1916, the Turkish government belatedly, belatedly, um, and there's no joy here for the victims, belatedly put 1,600 perpetrators on trial. They round up, they, 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 they conduct investigation after investigation after investigation. The investigating teams go out there in June of 1915. They're aware of it. Um, what's, you know, to be honest, they're, they're more concerned about Gallipoli, about, about Mesopotamia, about Palestine, about the Russians, and, and I, I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing, the fate of the Armenians is way, way, way down on their priority list. That, that's a guess. Um, but it's a great question. My second question was, what constitutes a revolution or a revolt, and uh, what constitutes self-defense? As you were saying many, many times in your presentation that you don't agree that with the actions that the Ottoman Empire took, or uh, Talat Pasha or Ender Pasha took, uh, with massacring or swooping through and killing all the Armenians. Uh, so what caused, how, how was that a revolution, or how was it a revolution in Bonn, or Erzurum, or Zeytun, for all these places, rather than a self-defense of people coming and killing your family or killing the whole village? Yeah, that's a great question. Donald Bloxham uh, from Edinburgh has a, has, a, has a great quote, and it goes something like this. It is difficult today to separate acts of defiance and rebellion from acts of self-defense. It is difficult today to, act, to, to separate acts of, of rebellion and defiance from acts of self-defense. There are certainly numbers of, of self-defense activities by Armenians and Armenian committeemen. Van in particular, it all depends on, on who you think started it. If you think the Armenians started it, it's an act of rebellion. If you think the Ottoman Turks started it, it's an act of self-defense. Frankly, there, there's, there are two stories. I, 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 I honestly, as, as, as I say, I don't know really who started it. What I know is by the 14th of April, they've seized the citadel, they've seized the city, and they're in direct communications with the Russian army that's coming in, and the Ottoman Druzini, led by Dro and Andronik, are in the Russian army, and, and, and they come and relieve the citadel. Now, maybe it's coincidence, you know, maybe that's, you know, it's Rule 56 from NCIS, or no such thing as convincing so I don't know. But, um, but, but, but we, we, we know the Turks lose this. We know the city is conquered. Um, there are many, many, many acts of self-defense. There, there's no question. Uh, the story has yet to be unrolled. And I've got to move on to somebody else. Okay, one, one more question. Yeah, let me let, let me kind of cut her off there because I, I really I really don't want to get into contemporary contemporary events. Okay, you're, you're not talking about 1915. You're talking about journalists in Turkey. Okay, here, here's here, here's what's happening in Turkey. More more journalists are in jail in Turkey today than in China. They're not in jail for discussing the Armenian genocide. They're in jail for criticizing President Erdogan and the policies of the AKP party. That's who's in jail. That's true. I, I'm, I'm kidding. I, I, that's, that, that's who's in jail. It's, it's troublesome. It's worrisome. The EU is very concerned about freedom of the press in Turkey, as we all are. Um, it's, it, it's not going in a good direction. But that's a separate thing. And nobody, nobody that I know of that, that's working on this is, is in jail or has been obstructed um, over this issue. Thank you. Um, right here, sir. 
from a military perspective, I, I thought that was interesting the way you laid it out. It, it might be a little speculative, but I wanted to hear your perspective. Um, right after the, um, uh, the event in Van, if you had the Ottoman government not undertaken the, the decision to relocate, from your, uh, from your perspective, and based on the logistics and dynamics and everything going on at the time, what do you think will be the, um, the flow and the sequence of events in the war going forward if that decision was not made and, and somehow the government just decided to keep battling uh, Russians and the others in the front line and, uh, and just left uh, everybody uh, untouched in the region? Yeah, that's a great question. Honest to God, nobody's, in, nobody's ever asked me that question. Um, <laughs> I, I think they got it wrong. I don't. I don't. I, I think the committee stuff would have fizzled out. Um, that there, there are there are two possible outcomes. One is that that the the committees are wildly successful, and, and a larger rebellion breaks out that 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 that, 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 that does what I I, I I've outlined. The the other is no change. Nothing happens. It fizzles. Um, more. Ottoman Armenians support the government that are engaged in revolutionary activities. How do we know that? Because they all went willingly. This is, this is eerily similar to the fate of the Jews. Why did the Jews get in the boxcars and get hauled off without, without screaming or yelling or opposing or, or fighting back? Uh, the conventional answer is they don't know what awaits them out there at Soviet War in Auschwitz. Why do these people go? Because the government tells them to go and they're loyal citizens. So most Armenians are loyal citizens. I, I, I think, frankly, the, the, the decision makers get it wrong. If I were to judge the quality of their decision, it would be probably disastrous fail. Um, that, 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 that's, a, that's, a good, that's an interesting question. Yes, please. I have a question about the guns. In one of the slides we showed, uh, the Ukrainian soldiers were shot Yes, we can. Those are Mauser 7.65 Parabellum, 7.65 millimeter Parabellum pistols. It's a very, it's a, it's a famous pistol from the age. If you're familiar with, with Winston Churchill and his escape from the Boers in South Africa, that's what Winston Churchill is carrying in South Africa. It's kind of a weapon of choice of, uh, of, uh, of soldiers. Uh, it's reliable. It doesn't break down much. Easy. It's easy to purchase. It's very expensive, um, but they're widely available. Germany. I'm sorry. It's a. I, 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 I show my background. I use a word like Mauser, and I assume almost everybody knows Mauser is made in Germany, and they still are today. Uh, one more question over here. Absolutely, that's true. Um, next question was, uh, you also talked about, and you mentioned a few times um, during the lecture and during the question and name, uh, that the Armenian citizens were loyal citizens and honorably fought in the military, the not military, um, and yet the small, and even at the convention of the, um, one of the revolutionary uh, conventions that you spoke about, they meet every two years, the two thirds of their convention was against that's correct. So with the one third that was willing to fight and they went to the, to the Russian military and whatnot, and the, um, somehow that group was able to worry or scare the Ottoman Empire to the point where they had to actually fight back or relocate, correct? That's true. So what happened to the honorable citizens? Why were they relocated? Why were they, who said the majority of them were so happy and honorable and Good question. They don't know. They don't know among the people who supports the guerrillas, the insurgents, and who does not. So they move everybody. the The problem with this whole relocation thing: why are these huge numbers, the quadrillage, the Briggs plan? Um, 
they, they, they don't know who's a good guy and who's a bad guy. What's the problem the U.S. Army has in Vietnam? You, you can't tell a Viet Cong from, from a villager. They all look the same. Um, they all dress the same. They all act the same. This is all, 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 they, all they know is that the roots of the Armenian Revolutionary Committees extend into the population. They, they don't know who's a good guy, who's a bad guy in their own minds. Can they wait? Can they wait six months and sort it out? They don't think so. They think it's going to be done right now. If we don't do something right now, you're seeing it today with the Islamic State and ISIS and I, I, the ISL in Syria. We got to do something right now. We're not sure what that is, but we got to do something because they're beheading people. And here, here's the thing about the Islamic State: for every guy that's beheading somebody, there's a moderate. There are moderates in the Islamic State. There are people in the Islamic State in Syria who are doing humanitarian activities by handing out food and turning on electricity and helping people. So not everybody in the Islamic State is a beheader. Um, the same thing exists in all organizations. There are extreme wings, there are moderate wings. The Ottoman decision makers choose to track the extremists rather than the moderates that they know about in the committees. Among the population, they don't know, they take everybody. Um, good decision, we can, you know, we can, we can, we can judge the decision. Um, Sir. Uh, I want to come back to the Ottoman archive. You mentioned that Atatürk changed the alphabet because we cannot, now we cannot read the Ottoman language. That's not necessary to research because, as far as I know, like my grandma or my both grandma, they were able to read both languages at the same time. And also, I strongly believe nowadays we can create the software, they can only read what the alphabet is, because he didn't change the language at all. He still speaks the perfect language, he works with the perfect language. So it shouldn't be any issue at all. Well, we have a phrase in the army, briefs easy, executes hard. Briefs easy, executes hard. Um, I, yeah, you know, what, what you're saying is makes sense. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not qualified to answer the question, frankly. It makes sense to me, there, there are things. I, I have used Google Translation, and, 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 and sometimes, I get the damnedest things sometimes, and I know, I know it's not, you know, I got a phrase here, and, 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 you know, and, it, and, it, and it comes out, cherry blossoms, clothesline, posse. And I say, wait, you know, so, but I, I, I follow what you're saying, I, I don't know, it's a good point. And I want to add something, um, when, I, when I grow up, I have a very good friends, I many friends, they are not mothers, they were able to speak same language with us, and they read that around. As you said, they were very healthy people. And I can tell you, I can think of your parents, I mean, who understand Ottoman language so well. So we are willing to sit down together, Turkish and Armenian, take a look at the exact same archive, to understand. The, uh, I haven't wanted to get into this, but, but the modern position of the Turkish Republic has changed. Uh, up, up until 2000, up until 2000, it was a denialist agenda. Thing never happened. If it did happen, it wasn't a lot of people. And oh, by the way, they got what was coming to them. I mean, all that stuff was piled into the to the official Turkish narrative and the Turkish position. The modern Turkish position today, as stated by the foreign ministry, is this: We don't know enough about it. We would like to see a joint historical commission convene not of Turks, not of Armenians, but of scholars who can go through the archives, neutral scholars, unbiased, and come up with some agreed upon views as to how to interpret the documents. Um, many Armenians today don't actually read Armenian. Peter Blakian up in Colgate, for example, doesn't read Armenian. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a translator to you know, the, the black dog of fate, um, those kind of things are all done with a translator. And so, so it's, it's not just a function. I don't speak Swedish. Uh, I, I'm a third generation Swede. Uh, my family came here and they refused to let the children speak Swedish. So it's, it's a problem that afflicts not only the modern country of Turkey, but most of we immigrants in the United States as well. It's a great, I've, I've got to get some people who haven't asked questions yet. The lady yeah, in the back. one question, and it's not related, but it's uh, the root of this problem apparently goes to Russian and Armenian. Uh, uh, unification. 
So there was a society in Russia, if you know, uh, North Shine, it's uh, translated. In Russian it sounds like Severnaya Siyanya. Do you know about that? Could you, could you talk about that? It was in the 19th century, the society that was uh, in charge of Russia. It's are you talking about, are you talking about one, one, of, one of the revolutionary societies in Russia? Yeah, it could be called. There are a number of them. I, I, I'm not a specialist in Russian history. I'm broadly familiar with words like nihilists and anarchists. Uh, the Decemberists come along later on. Uh, the revolution of 1905. Lenin. Um, the Bolsheviks are this kind of a committee. Lenin flees to Switzerland, organizes support, collects money. The Germans contact him. He activates the cells that are remaining in St. Petersburg, and everything goes to pieces in 1917. The Russians have a longer history, or as long a history, of, of these types of organizations as, as anybody in the Ottoman Empire. I'm glad you brought that up. Another question. Yes, please. Um, first of all, about the speaking Ottoman uh, Arabic or not. As far as I know, <clears throat> in Bosphorus University, Bohatichi, they have master's and PhD programs for all um, um, Arabic. So I'm sure they can find something to get. You're talking about the, for the Ottoman Turkish? Yes. 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 Um, many of the major Turkish universities uh, have, have programs in, in Ottoman Turkish. Uh, many of the Turkish studies programs uh, that we in the Institute of Turkish Studies in the United States um, encourage and support teach uh, classes in Ottoman Turkish. Um, it's it's tough. There there are three things. One, one you've got to got to get get your arms around Turkish to begin with. Number two, you've got to get your arms around the the, the the Persian Arabic script, and number three, you've got to get your arms around all, all the words that have changed. Army division, for example, an army unit called a division. Today is called a tumen in, in modern Turkish. It's, it's called fikra in Ottoman Turkish. So many of the words, so there are three steps, and it's tough. It's really a tough I thing. Mean, in person, I know there are people studying. Yes. People yes. My question is about the literature, if I may. Um, you mentioned that Armenian revolutionary committees, there were very few, not very many Armenians originally started and maybe um, continued to be. So who were the other people? What were their ethnic origins? Of uh, uh, the Armenians? No, I mean the Armenian committees, when they formed the Armenian revolutionary committees that you mentioned, and you said there weren't that many Armenians. Oh, I, I meant of the Armenian population, not very many were actively involved in the committees. Yes, so who else was involved in these committees? Well, the Armenian committees are made up of ethnic Armenians who are Ottoman citizens. There are other committees, the Young Turks, the, the Committee of Union and Progress that overthrows the government in, in, in a coup d'etat in 1912. They're, they're, they're Muslim Turks. Um, there are committees of Arabics, the famous al Ad which is an Arabic counterpart to the ARF, made up of a few army officers and a few officials down in Damascus in, in Syria. Um, they blow it. They, 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 they come to a sad end. So there are different, the, I, don't, I, I know of nothing that the Kurds are doing, but I know the, the Arabs, uh, the Turks themselves before the war, and the Armenians, the Bulgarians certainly before 1912. Uh, so, did I? Yeah, I'm not sure I got your question right. Did I give you the answer? That I think so. My question was, they started with very few um, people, and then they didn't get much support, so they had to go to Russia, and they didn't get support there, and then they came back, and they started 